Let's take a look at the ellipse. Here I have a perfectly round object that I have put rubber bands on. And I've put these rubber bands on to show the axis used to draw an ellipse. We have a major axis that runs horizontally left to right, and we have a minor axis that runs vertically top to bottom. When you're drawing a, an ellipse, the horizontal axis will always be ho true horizontal to your page for a horizontal ellipse. It'll be different for a vertical ellipse like a clock on a wall. Notice also that I've placed these rubber bands at 90 degrees. So that, that fits in there just perfectly. So they are, it is 90 degrees true. So taking a look at this, when I when we look at it right at us, that's a perfect circle, symmetrical object. As we tilt it, notice how the minor axis becomes shorter. The major axis stays the same, but the minor axis becomes shorter. Until at one point, at the horizon line, the line is perfectly flat. Also notice that the ellipse is a perfectly smooth line. There are no points at the major axis. Everybody always wants to put a point there. But it is a soft, rounded line. Even when we get to here, it's still soft and rounded. When you hear me talking about adding dimples to draw the ellipse, this is what I mean. And I, I know it sounds funny, but if you draw them as dimples, soft little round edges, you'll have a much nicer ellipse drawn. So let's take a look at the front edge here. And when it is below the horizon line, or when we can look down into something, so it's below our eye, we're looking down in it, the front edge smiles at us. But when we have an object high up on a shelf, on top of a refrigerator, anything above our eye line, then the front edge uh, frowns at us. Another thing to notice, and it, it, I find it very interesting, is that here we know that the rubber bands are symmetrical and in the very center. But when we tilt this, look at what happens. The front visually is bigger and the back half is visually smaller. And that is because of the foreshortening of perspective. Things in the foreground do look bigger. So when we build our ellipse, when we draw it, we are going to actually have the center of our apex, I'm sorry, the center of our axis a little bit farther up. But know that the actual center is behind true center. Okay, perhaps a better way to explain the change in the ellipse as it relates to the horizon line is in viewing this tube, this plastic tube that I have drawn rings on. You can see right here at the center, get right in there, the center line is on the horizon and then the two rings, top and bottom, are just a little bit more elliptical. So it's flat at the horizon, a little bit more elliptical as it moves out. And this one down here is even wider. I'm zooming back in and then I'll tilt. So there's the flat line. I'll tilt down a little bit wider, wider, until we get to the table. Notice the reflection goes straight down in there also. Okay, then moving back up horizontal and just past horizontal, wider, wider, till we're at the top. Notice also that the line of the ellipse that's in the front will be the darker line. This line frowns at us. This It goes down at the sides before it goes around the back. Whereas when it's below the horizon line, 
the line in the front smiles at us. An ellipse is a perfectly symmetrical object. We have a major axis and we have a minor axis. And being symmetrical, it's symmetrical top to bottom and symmetrical side to side. So the distance from top to, from top to center and center to bottom is equal and equal distance from the center side to side. So you can actually measure it if you want to when, when you're starting to do this. Okay, then we have to draw this ellipse. It's a very soft motion. I like to start with dimples on either side and then the top frowns at me, the bottom smiles at me. And you can get pretty accurate for a good sketch just like that. 